trying to be uh, unconfusing to a novice user. And macro is the word the manual uses when it's when it uh, lapses into computer science jargon. But they're the same, um, really, in concept. And probably uh, uh, the new manual will just say that we call them control sequences because they control tech. And they're called macros because everybody programming computer knows what a macro is. And, and uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's the. Now, on the other hand, for web, uh, we also have macros. And we don't call those control sequences. We just call those macros. Um, those are things that have been defined with uh, with the, with the, the define in, uh, instruction in your in your book. Now, to represent uh, a control sequence um, in tech, there's uh, uh, that means backslash something uh, is a control sequence, and the something is either well, there's three kinds. One is where the something is um, uh, one character long. And uh, another case is where the something consists of two or more letters. And this letter means that it's that the chicode, the the code, the type of the of the character in the chicode table is 11. That's a, that's what a, a letter means. So those are things that if you have two or more of those that makes a control sequence in tech like backslash end. Um, then there's uh, the third kind, which is an active character, and that's when the chicote is 13. And those are those um, um, are uh, something like single character control signals, but they're separate from the one from the backslash. Uh, and so it was backslash ampersand would be different from ampersand if ampersand is chicote 13 in Tech 82, not in the uh, old version of Tech, but in the new one. Um, it makes a difference to the scanner also between those last two types. The control sequence starting with a backslash always ignores spaces that follow it. So an optional space always follows uh, follows a control sequence starting with a backslash. But an active character, one of these code 13 kind of things, um, does not gobble up any space after it. Um, so the space after that will will survive it. OK, that um, now in the uh, Inside the machine, we also have to take care of, of um, making sure that these control sequences can disappear at the end of a group if they've been defined inside of a group. And uh, we have to, uh, let's see, uh, handle four kinds of control sequences that can be defined. They can be defined to be long or outer or both. Now, you remember long, it means that it's their parameters can take the end of a paragraph symbol. Um, and an outer one is something that's supposed to be uh, illegal to use except when you're at a quiet time, some, somehow in an outer part of the file, not within something else. Both of these ideas, long and outer, are intended to catch a common error of someone mis, um, misplacing a right, missing a right brace somehow, or not matching a, a, a parameter uh, because uh, of some type typographic error, and instead of scanning all the way to the end of the file, we want to catch it real quick. So if you if you run into um, uh, something that's outer, then you know you've made a mistake. So for example, people will define something to be outer if um, it's uh, the beginning of a, of a theorem in a, in a math paper. You shouldn't have a beginning of a theorem in the middle of some formula, right? Um, and uh, and uh, you define something to be long if it's a, if if you expect that the parameter to that macro will uh, possibly have more than one paragraph in it. But otherwise, as soon as somebody gets to the end of a paragraph and hasn't finished uh, the argument to a macro, uh, the, the macro isn't long. Then tech will stop right there and and uh, and recover. Uh, with with some luck, it'll recover. And, and go on to the next paragraph uh, with a fresh slate. So, <clears throat> so we just mark those uh, four kinds of control sequences: long, outer, or both, or neither. Question here? Uh, please, please uh, reach behind you for a microphone and push the red button. No, it has to go on the videotape. <laughs> push the red button. <laughs> red button. Okay. Um. <laughs> and, 
Yeah, wait a minute. Put okay. your hand Do things like ital backslash IT for italics, will they have to be declared to be long? Or since they're equivalent oh. to backslash colon something, um, will they automatically be long? You see, they don't take a parameter, so it doesn't matter. It's only affects oh. whether the parameter contains right. okay. backslash PAR or not. Now, an empty line and backslash PAR are supposedly exactly equivalent. They should even match each other as as uh, as parameters go. Okay, now we've when we've got a long control sequence defined in there or a macro, whatever you want to call it, um, we have to have have a way to represent it inside a, inside a tech, and this is the other uh, important data structure that appears in MEM. These are all one-word items, and they're called token lists. And token lists are um, defined somewhere or other. Let's see the table of contents. Set, uh, part 20 starts at module 270. So um, uh, token lists are explained. Um, uh, there with a bunch of definitions, but the real explanation starts on the next page. Um, well, it, you've got to turn the page back and forth on here. So what, what I wanted to do when I'm representing a token list is have something that in, in a half a word, I'll be able to represent everything that tech might want to be scanning. So I have 16 bits to work with, at least. Um, now, what do, I, what do I actually get when I scan uh, the letter A? I get a command code and a, ch a character code. So if I scan a letter A, I get an 11 and a character code, which is 65 uh, for the internal code of a capital A. 11 is letter, and this is uh, OK. But it's a number. You, know, you don't have to know these numbers. You don't have to memorize them or anything. If you were tracing with commands, it would say the letter A, because it would look at the, that the command code, 11, and it would look at the character code and figure out how to output its inter internal character code, 65, and 11 would, would mean the letter. Now, the, now um, command codes are very important, and we'll talk about those shortly. Um, but within a token, they, they're restricted. They can only actually be between 1 and 14. Um, none of the commands coming through in a token list are going to be 0 nor will they be greater than 14. Um, for, um, and some of those aren't the same as the two codes, and some of them are. I guess we might as well look at those four, first 14 codes. The command codes is, the, is a page uh, that defines all these internal numbers. It's uh, module 201. <clears throat> as I'm writing the tech program, I'm actually referring to this page more often than any other page. But I don't think the reader has to. It's just that as writing it, I had to make sure that I had all the commands in there. Um, uh, but um, uh, anyway, the, think the, uh, uh, the, the low, the small command codes that, that's in module 201, they're all, uh, uh, they include the two codes. And then we double use the ones that could never come through. So uh, escape, for example, is zero because if you give it a code of zero to a character like a backslash, it uh, to make it an escape, uh, uh, that's the code. However, never will a backslash with something with an escape code actually come through into a token list because that starts a control sequence and you're going to go ahead and get the whole control sequence. So that command code is also um, used to mean relax and. Uh, our left brace is uh, code one is only left brace two, two is right brace uh, and so on and then we get number five um, uh, if somebody had a carriage return a, a, a character to coded five that uh, acts like an end of a line and um, again it will never come through the scanner because we get to the end of a line you look to the next line to get something and, and, and put a blank through the scanner um, so five is also used to mean output a macro parameter and um, uh, it's also used to mean backslash CR, so it's got three three purposes here. Um, and for a character, it'll never come through. Um, if you type a hash mark, that could come through as a six, and so so on with all these other ones. We get to an active character, a thirteen. It's going to be again a control sequence, so it's going to be replaced by something else. It won't come through the scanner as a token, uh, but the end of a paragraph is going to come through as a, as a uh, thirteen, and so will. Um, something, uh, let's see, match a macro parameter? No, that'll be interrupted by actually matching the parameter. 
So end of paragraph, uh, I guess, can come in as a 13. No. What happened? No. Actually, let me see. Um, yeah, no, no, this 13 would come through, but it's only because it's stored inside a token list itself. Uh, so this, these 13 and 14 are special, are special uh, commands that, that are inserted in, uh, into token lists just so that we can uh, do our funny things with parameters when we're, when we're fetching them out of the scanner. Um, and they never come through for user characters. Anyway, this, this command code will always be some number between 1 and 14, and none of the other values are possible there. Uh, this char code could be anything from um, uh, 1 to 127, 0 to 127 uh, for a character. And uh, uh, that's one case of a token. The other case of a token is a control sequence, like backslash relax is the simplest control sequence. But there are other. Uh, see, can you can you see this far down? No, you can't see it. Um, yeah. Good idea. Okay, so um, if now to get backslash relax coming through the token, we wouldn't give the command code for relax, but instead we'd give the um, uh, the hash table pointer for relax. Since, the, since uh, by the, between the time you define uh, uh, something with relax in it and the time you use it, you might have changed the meaning of relax. Or this might be some control sequence that wasn't even defined yet. So for this, we want to point to the table of um, equivalence for each identifier. So there's a hash table, that uh, a, a table that will associate with every, every uh, sequence of letters that you've used. Uh, somewhere relax will appear in there. And that will tell what the meaning of relax is. And there will be a, uh, there will be a command code and a chur code associated with relax at any given time. But in the token list, we'll just have a pointer to this word. We won't have the, the contents of this word since this might, might change. So now, uh, when we represent then uh, a definition as a list of tokens, each token is either a pair of command and char like this, or it's a control sequence. Now, a question, uh, Tony, uh, Toby. The, uh, the the characters and the fonts are extended to 256, but these tokens are still limited to 127 well, characters. Well, um, the, the in a font you can have 256 characters, but on your keyboard input, uh, uh, seven-bit codes are, are are only accepted. So. So somebody does not, um, uh, so we are not uh, accepting um, uh, 256 codes in the extra array. The extra array um, and the XOR array, um, <clears throat> extra gives a, gives a uh, uh, let's suppose, for example, that we are on a cray where they have, I think, 9-bit nine bit, uh, nine uh, characters or say Epsidic where you have 8-bit characters, okay? Let's say Epsidic. So in that case, um, Xchur of um, 65 would be some 8-bit character. Xord would be an array that takes any 8-bit character into a 7-bit internal code. But my internal codes are only 7-bit for, for the, the things in the buffer, for example, in the string, string pool are all 7-bit. So you have 128 uh, internal codes that tech w would work with. Um, that's not a terribly inherent restriction, except that the, uh, if you wanted to work with larger, you'd have to increase the size of the CH code, the UC code, LC code, DEL code, SF code tables, because all of those are indexed by 0 to 127. Um, but uh, you, you would have room for. Uh, uh, well, no, I don't add min quarter word to this to this guy either. I don't think so. You would have to. Well, anyway, there would be room though, because I I actually compute the value of it, of this token by taking 11, multiply by 256, and add 65. I compute the value of this token by taking a large number, sufficiently large, like two to the tenth or something. No. Oh. 2 to the 16th, 2 to the 12th, I guess. 
because um, this will never be more than 14, so it certainly won't be 16. That would be 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 8th would be 2 to the 12th. So if I take 2 to the 12th plus uh, the location of, of relax in the table, we'll, we'll represent a control sequence. Uh, so if, so uh, we call this 2 to the 12th is called the CS token flag. And if you add CS token flag to the location of the, se of the control sequence, then you've represented the control sequence as a token. Um, if you have anything less than 2 to the 12th, anything less than this token flag, then you divide by 256 and you figure out uh, what the, com the command and the character parts are of it. Of it. Um, as far as the, uh, but as far as extending the, the, the type ASCII code to 8 bits, uh, this would lead to incompatibilities with other versions of tech, uh, uh, yet I don't think it would mess up any of the data structures particularly. One character, uh, Web says that one character constants um, are used for strings 0 to 127. And uh, that would also that would also have to be changed to allow one character constants to be larger because Web's internal code is identical to text. When you say double quote A in double quote in a Web program, it's supposed to give the text the same internal code that tech uses. The internal code is, of course, just internal. So you you, you know it's a, it's an arbitrary mapping. If we can handle EBCDIC, we can handle anything. But uh, but as long as it only maps, as long as, as long as it only gives us 128 different possibilities um, on end, then we can move those 128 into a spa, into uh, 256 or 512 afterwards. But we just won't won't fill the the uh, the whole range. <clears throat> now the um, uh, so the the data representation of tokens, as I've said has two cases because there's two kinds of tokens. There's the, the control sequence tokens. This includes all three kinds of control sequences uh, because all three of them are located in the same uh, uh, array or the kind that are packed with a command and a character together. Now, um, in order to demonstrate, so, so let's see. Um, uh, in order to demonstrate that again, there's a procedure called show token list, and that starts in module 273. And it's just two pages long, but it goes through and interprets a token, a whole token list. And that's what prints out a lot of the things that you would see in, in tech uh, uh, when you have a, uh, when it's uh, storing, when it's showing you uh, what, it, what it thinks a macro was. Uh, it's using this show token list procedure. Now, there's some more complications, though, that I've got to mention because of parameters. You see, a token list can, has to also represent the fact that a macro might have parameters that we want to match. And so that's all explained in module 272. Um, and, and there's a, 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 an example there, which I might as well put on the blackboard, but it's also in your, it's also, it's also in the note. Now, the, the example um, is a definition of a macro, and we're just going to show how that, how that's represented inside, step by step, so you get the idea. So somebody has typed into tech, define backslash mac um, a um, hash one hash two uh, uh, space and then um, backslash b and then a space space of course will be ignored uh, since it follows a control sequence then left br brace hash one backslash minus a space hash hash one this is not intended to be the simple example this is intended to be the one that shows you everything, uh, so that it, so that uh, um, you'll be completely puzzled at first. But if you have a little patience, you'll feel that you, that uh, that, that uh, nothing. Uh, once you figure this one out, then you'll feel that you have total power to do all the rest. Now, this is the so this example is um, uh, shows uh, all the kinds of things that can happen, except for a, uh, a uh, matching a left brace. Uh, which is a slightly special case. Now, um, okay, Mac is going to be a token list inside the mach inside of tech, and um, uh, we and it's going to be 
in that one word area of memory uh, linked together and this left the info parts of each word are, is going to be a representation of the token uh, so let's see what they what it would look like well first of all um, you would have a letter and a that's type of 11 but let's write it symbolically so letter a that's your first that's the first one then you have uh, a parameter number one now you don't store that as hash mark one uh, well for one thing the one is redundant because the first parameter has to be number one so instead it just says match a parameter and doesn't give any number in it at all but it does give the uh, internal code number of the hash mark because somebody might have several different uh, symbols that he, that he's using for, for macro parameters whatever type that is six or something um, and whichever one he used uh, we could reflect there and type it out in, in that uh, uh, as that character if we are asked to type out this token list so we save that character there we call it match but then the, the one is suppressed um, if, if the person wrote two here, give them an error message saying, uh, uh, you know, illegal, uh, you're supposed to number your parameters consecutively or something like that. And then uh, uh, that would catch uh, catch an error of, of uh, where something else probably was wrong up above. Now, matching. Um, uh, so so the, these two go into just match and duplicating the, the uh, character code, internal code of this guy. Similarly, for that one. Um, and then a blank space. A blank space is type spacer in the command code and um, the code for space. I can mention that all uh, um, that all space codes, no matter what the character is, if it's a type spacer, I convert it to a blank um, on input so that it, they'll all match each other when you're study when you're matching macro parameters. A carriage return, a tab. Um, anything that you've said is a type space will match in a macro uh, and the reason is that uh, this had caused many errors where people were trying to would make a definition and they would in one place have a carriage return in another place have a space or a tab or something and it would look okay on their screen and say what's going wrong um, so everything in, every, everything that's been defined to be a type spacer is actually converted you tech doesn't remember anymore what what it, what this spacer was if it was an asterisk and somebody said asterisk was uh, to code 10 it would just be equivalent to a space um, then comes letter no that's ridiculous that's a that's a bug um, okay well, that's a that's a bug in the comment there uh, it, it, so uh, this would be a control sequence B. So this would be, um, uh, yeah, this would be control sequence. So this would be CS flag plus the location of B. Um, it's the next thing. And... Um, so I guess, I, or, or, or in other words, um, I can represent that notationally as just backslash b. So, so cross off the word letter there. That's a mis, that's a misprint in that line. You should just say backslash b. It's a control sequence for b. Is the next thing after this blank space, and then no blank space for that. Well, then comes a special token called end match, and end match is the um, um, is the command code at the uh, and the chur is zero, I believe. So the end match is a command code of 14, and match is a command code 13, I guess. And uh, yeah, and and this tells tech that uh, when you when you're trying to look for Mac, um, then you get here, you finish, uh, you got all your parameters. Now. <clears throat> uh, Proceeding, then we would go into the first thing, and this would say out param one. This would say it's time, as we're continuing to read this token list, to now start reading parameter one that we've already found as we've been reading this part of the, of the token list. And then it would say 
uh, do this control sequence, and it would say letter A, and it would say blank space, um, and it would say what? Well, now, in a uh, right-hand side of a definition, two hash marks in a row is used to stand for a hash mark. So this would now say Mac row parameter hash mark. And then this is a, a other char one. It's not a letter, and, it's, and digits aren't specially noted, so this is a, a one of type 12. Um, this is parameter two, so it's out, par, out param two, uh, blank space significant after a, a digit usually not significant because the digit is usually a constant, but in case of parameters, uh, parameters are only one digit long. This space is there, blank space, and um, again, out param two. And then the link of this last token will be zero, or will be null, I mean, indicating that the token list is over with. Okay? So inside of the inside of tech there would be this list of half word numbers um, and it and uh, you ask the show token list procedure to print these and it would uh, print what? Well uh, what it prints is shown on an example of the next page on two seventy three. Um, it prints the letter A, then it prints uh, hash mark one. Now it knows what your character is. It knows what your hash mark character is uh, by looking here. It learns it as it goes uh, because you might have used some other symbol and tech isn't initialized to think that this character is any different than any, than any others. Um, uh, and different token lists might have different hash characters in them. Um, and then hash two comes out, blank space comes out, and control sequence B. Now whenever a control sequence um, ends with a letter, uh, it, uh, this show token list automatically puts a space after it. it. Just in case the thing after it is going to be a letter. It doesn't look ahead to see if a letter is next. If a letter were next, it would be a bad mistake to leave a space out. So there's always a space after um, uh, of, of this if it's a letter. Um, I think maybe even if it's not a letter, I forget now. In the old tech, it, it, uh, it, made, a ca it made a decision, but I think now it always puts a space out, but I, I don't remember for sure. Um, and then it gets to end match and it translates that into a, a hyphen and a greater than sign to, to look something like a right arrow. Then comes um, out param one gets translated into hash one. Okay. Um, presumably you're not using out param unless you've already had parameters. So it's already learned what, what code to use for that parameter. However, the, uh, yeah, okay, I think it, it, it can learn always in time. So it puts this out and it says there there's no space after it, so I have to double check the code and see if it, if it does that or not. Um, it says backslash, uh, uh, backslash hyphen without a space, and I'm not sure about that. I'll double check it. Then letter A space macro parameter that comes out as two of those symbols. Uh, one comes out as a one and so on to the end. Um, now let me see how does that, so let's see if we can figure out from this code what comes out when I'm displaying a, a control sequence. So the um, the token list procedure looks like this. I'm reading from from module 273. Um, it's got several parameters. Uh, uh, the P is the main one. That's where the token list starts. Q is another one that's only used. Um, uh, if, if we're printing out error messages, if we get to position Q, we're supposed to do something to switch from line one to line two of the error message. And L is an upper bound. If we get to printing out too much output, we'll quit. No, no sense going any further than, uh, than that upper bound. Okay, now uh, come into the program and it's, it uh, sets match to, the, to hash mark just in case we haven't learned it in time. I, I think that's only to make this procedure robust uh, in case of a token list that wouldn't really have have arisen in the course of, tech, of, of a tech job. Um, N is zero. That's the number of parameters we've seen so far. And tally is the number of characters we've generated. OK, now, it, so the main thing we have to do is display token P and return if there are problems. So that's module 274. Let's look at 274. Um, 
if it's P is out of range, then we print escape clobbered with a period after it. Um, so we're debugging, and uh, you, you're printing out a token list, and you get to a pointer that it's not in the one one word area of memory, um, then uh, something is definitely wrong, and we, we're going to give up. We're going to print clobbered with a period after it, or we can tell that distinct from the uh, control sequence clobbered. Because why? Because if the, if the if the if the user had a real control sequence clobbered, uh, it would also have a, it would be, get a space after it instead of a period. So this way, at least, we'll be able to look at the message and uh, see that it was a that it was an, uh, this kind of an error indication. But this procedure is not supposed to ever call error because it's used by the error routine to describe the uh, location of an error. Okay. Now, if info p is greater than or equal cs token flag, then we're in this case where we have a control sequence, so we call on our subroutine called print cs, which prints a control sequence. Otherwise, we're going to divide by octal 400, or same as saying 256, and uh, break it into the m and c part. The m is the uh, command code, and the c is the character code. Um, we uh, print bad with a period after it if uh, we happen to have a negative token for some reason, or, um, or a character code greater than 127. Otherwise, we are going to display it in the uh, fashion described on the next page. Okay, so we got to, in order to solve our problem as to whether a space comes after this or not, we have to look up print CS. Where in the heck is print CS? Well, for that, I got to look in the index. Now, sometimes I thought it would be neat to have um, uh, a subscript on all my identifiers saying where they were <laughs> defined, so I could save one w one step in my search. Excuse me. 2.45? Okay, thank you. Trouble with that is that some identifiers are declared many times, and so I, wouldn't, it, I would have to know about the scope of each one, and it would be quite tricky. Now, the <clears throat> okay, print CS, uh, it says, it prints the name of a control sequence and a space after the name if it in, consists entirely of letters. And so um, uh, that's the uh, idea here. Uh, then it will not get a space after this backslash hyphen, and this hyphen had to been coded to be a type letter. Uh, and, there, and it goes through the three the three cases of a um, of a of a control sequence. Now, um, uh, here we get. I want to talk about another one of Tech's big tables. This is the table uh, called the the table of equivalence. And the um, table of equivalence is where we keep all of the meanings of, the, of all the control sequences. The table of equivalence is um, described starting on, pay, on module 213, and it's called EQTB. Um, it's one of the few places where I've used a uh, cryptic abbreviation instead of a word in the in the uh, or, or something unpronounceable as an identifier in this program, um, I used to do that a lot, and now uh, having the the freedom to use multi-letter identifiers, it turned out usually better to have a, a long pronounceable identifier. But this darn one was used so often, I couldn't see myself um, writing out equivalence table, and I couldn't think of a good uh, uh, in, in between. So it's called EQTB, and I don't know what I say to myself except ICTEB or something like that. When I read it, I'm sorry about it. But anyway, there's six parts to EQTB. And um, they are an equal size, but um, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, pretend they are for the time being. So there's six regions. And um, let's take a look at what they are. Now, the first region is uh, one character control sequences. So these are the, uh, the things that we, there's 128 of them that could be active characters, type 13 characters. And then there's 128 of them that is backslash character, backslash A, backslash hyphen, and so on. So, so um, 256 altogether, um, one character control sequences. The next region is the 
greater than or equal to letter control sequences. Uh, the third region is for skips and glues, glue parameters. Fourth region is um, uh, what I call uh, well half word entries, but it's re it's like local quantities. But it's half word entry uh, things like the name of the current font, uh, the name of the current par shape, um, and uh, and all of the boxes like box one, or box zero, up to box two fifty five pointers to those boxes. Uh, a pointer is a half word, so this will this will uh, now boxes are now local. Um, they'll go away at the end of a group um, uh, unless you define them to be global when you said set box. And so um, uh, anyway, it's put into EQTV. Uh, then these are integers here. And uh, the last are the dimensions. So the, it has six parts to it. Uh, and it's used for keeping local quantities. Everything that I want to be subject to the um, the local mechanism, the thing of going away at the end of a group, is stored in EQTB. <clears throat> now, uh, especially the control sequences. Um, so the, now, for the for these entries um, in in regions one to four, the, it's funny. It has six regions, and they're slightly different in their feature. But one thing they have in common is that they are, uh, are going away at the end of a group. Now, in the first four regions, for each guy in here, we store a command and a, and a, and a modifier called the chur to the thing. Um, the command is a uh, quarter word, and the chur is a half word. So every, um, every control sequence, for example, has a command that indicates whether it's a Ordinary call or a long one or an outer one or a long and outer. Um, um, or it might be a tech primitive. So it might have a command code that says this is a, 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 a def instruction or something like that. So the command code says what this control sequence means. Um, the chur code is a half word. So it might, for example, in the case of a, of a defined control sequence by the user, um, H would be a pointer to the mem location for the beginning of the to token list. Well, it's not really the beginning of the token list because there's a reference count first. Um, it, uh, we, for each token list, we keep a, uh, a count of how many times people are using the token list. Whenever that count drops to zero, we flush it. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, this is, uh, uh, has turned out to be quite an, quite an efficient way to do things. So, um, uh, the, it's a pointer to the reference count of a token list in the case of a call instruction. But it's a half word. The chur field is a half word. And you have these for all four parts. That's what the equivalent is. Um, uh, this is called, the command field is actually called the EQ type. And um, this part is called the equiv. And then later on, if tech is using it through the scanner, EQ type gets called the command and equiv gets called the chur. Um, some of the EQ types are special that should never come through the scanner. For example, the uh, current paragraph shape is stored somewhere in, in this region here, and its EQ type says par shape. And uh, some, uh, but par shape is when it comes through the scanner, it's not supposed to mean the current paragraph shape. It's supposed to mean the command to set the paragraph shape. It's a different thing entirely. Um, so uh, par shape here means to tech um, th this equivalent has to be uh, recycled in a funny way when you're when you're coming to the end of a group and, the, and you're going to give up the, this par shape and go back to the outer one. You have to return a par shape node to the free memory. Um, and that's why you look at the EQ type to see that. Uh, so some of the e some of the EQ types are command codes that would come through the scanner. Some of them aren't. But in, in, in any case, all of these guys have a type indicating what the what what kind of equivalent it has. Uh, now here um, in the last two regions, though, they, they don't have a quarter word and a half word associated with them. They have a full word, an integer or a scaled value, of course, because an integer 
wouldn't fit in a quarter word and a half word. So in those regions, when we fetch a word out of region 5 of, of uh, EQTB, we expect to, to take a whole integer out of it. <clears throat> now, region 2 is special because it has a hash table associated with it. All of these guys, furthermore, have a hash array that runs from the beginning of region 2 to the end of region 2. And the hash array um, uh, will give information as to what's the name. What are, these, uh, what are the letters in this thing? So they have pointers here, um, and one of them is a pointer to the string table. Uh, it's the number of a string, so we can say where, what the name, where the name starts in the string pool. The other one is a pointer within the hash table to other things that uh, belong to the same list uh, uh, that uh, we, 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 we take the letter sequence and convert it to a small number. Um, and then we, everything that, get, that uh, has the same uh, value of that number would, would get uh, linked together. Uh, the method actually used for hashing is, a, is the, called the method of coalescing lists and uh, with, a, um, um, with the refinement that uh, uh, my student Jeff Vitter uh, wrote a thesis about so that, it's, so that we actually uh, choose this hash value that we can, we, we take every sequence and we we convert it to its so-called hash code, which is a which um, is a number somewhere about the first 85 percent of this table, and um, and uh, the first things that don't that that uh, uh, when we have two things going into the same place, the first ones go into the last 15 percent and start filling up the table until finally the overflows uh, come into the main table itself. And Jeff's thesis show that 85 percent is the right number to get the best efficiency out of this method. You can expect that these lists on the average are going to be of length something like 1.7 or some, some small number, so that very rarely do you actually have a long number of things to check. Uh, those are details about hashing that um, are uh, in, in another book I wrote. So, so um, uh, anyway, that's a hash method. But the hash table then, an array called hash, uh, starts at location at the beginning of region two here and ends at the end of, of region two. It's only used for that part of the table. Now, <clears throat> these equivalents then um, are where we keep um, control sequences. So let's recapitulate what I said. Uh, suppose somebody says def uh, a, um, you know, and then he, he puts b here. Okay, it's a fairly simple case. So what's going to happen? Um, Tech is going to, to look to, to see this backslash here. It says, oh, escape character. Um, it's going to be a control sequence, and it looks at the DEF, and then it sees a non letter. And so it says, OK, DEF is the thing I'm supposed to look for. It's a control sequence uh, made up of uh, more than one letter. So it computes a hash code for DEF. Say the hash code is 300. It looks at position 300 and points to a string and says, does that string number three, uh, string indicated by this, is that DEF? Uh, whoops, no, it isn't. Wasn't DEF? OK, we'll look at the, at the, at the link here. Uh, and we'll look at another place in the hash table that points us to another string. Ah, uh, yes, that is DEF. OK, what, so we found DEF at this part of the, of the EQTB. What does it mean? So we look up EQ type of DEF, and it says, that's defined. That means you're defining a control sequence. And so um, you found DEF that it means define. OK, the define routine looks at the next token without expanding it as a macro. And, and uh, what happens? It sees an escape sequence. It sees a letter. So it says, uh-oh, maybe there's going to be another letter. We'll have uh, another control sequence of more than one letter. No, it's not a letter. It's a uh, to code one, it's a uh, left brace kind of a token. So this is a one letter control sequence, a special case of a one character control sequence. So we look up here. We don't go through hashing on this one. We pick it up out of EQTB and we look up here. What's its EQ type? But we, OK, but we're going to define it. So what, no matter what its EQ type was, if it, it could have been def also. It could have said define whatever its EQ type was. We're going to change it and make a new definition of it. We're going to put in this place in EQTB um, call, which is the command code, the EQ type for a, uh, a, an ordinary defined control sequence. 
And then we're going to uh, run a little program that's called scan tokes that, that reads the left brace, goes to the end, um, builds a token list for this thing, puts it in a big memory array, and then the equiv is going to point to that, um, to that token list. And we'll have a call in here. Now, but what about what used to be in there? Before I put the call on there, A was defined as something else. I've got to do something with that because it's got to come back again later on when I get to the end of the group. Okay? So um, that's the, that's the uh, uh, last link in our chain here. Um, and there's another uh, table of importance called the uh, save stack. And this is where we save things that have to be restored later. <clears throat> so the save stack is, is uh, full of memory words that are going to be put back on the on EQTB later. Let's let's see now. Backslash A is in location. Uh, well, um, if you work it out, it's 129 plus six plus uh, 97. Whatever. Well, whatever. Let's say might as well get it right. Um, 226, I think. In location 226, there's going to be uh, backslash A, and so it's going to be represented as location 226 in EQTB. Now, when I'm redefining that, there was a previous meaning to backslash A. I don't care what it was. Uh, uh, let's call it um, star because it, uh, it just whatever its previous meaning was. Um, when I define it again, this previous meaning is going to be wiped out, except that if, if I'm inside of a group, at the end of the group, the previous meaning is supposed to come back. So what I'll do is, in the save stack, um, Maybe the save stack already has some stuff in it. Here I'm going to put the old thing that used to be for A. And then on the next word under it, I'll put uh, 226, indication that 226 has to be fixed up when I get to the end of the group. OK. Uh, so the save stack contains a lot of two word items like this. And the 226 also has a type code associated with it saying um, uh, fix up 226, OK, something like that. Now, <clears throat> usually when I'm doing this, this control sequence didn't have any meaning. On, uh, um, it was just an undefined control sequence outside in the outer block. And so I'm wasting space on the safe stack. So there's a special case that says easy fix up or whatever it's called. Uh, in the case that this star star was the uh, was the, the most common one of undefined control sequence and easy fix up it only saw one word and and assume that 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 the previous one was easy fix up but that's a technicality it's uh, conceptually it's the same idea it's just a small refinement to it to save space so what we put in and when we change something on the EQ table um, we put an entry on the save stack and this will be the address in EQTB and if the address is one of these high numbers we know that we're that the uh, thing we we're, we're have to restore is going to be an integer or a scale or a, a skip or a half word or something. By, by the range of this address, we can tell what, um, uh, what kind of a fix up we're going to be doing. If it's a small number, we have to look at the EQ type to see what kind of a fix up we're doing. But if it's a large number, we know it's an integer. Yeah. Uh, uh, please use the mic. How do you know how much to restore? Uh, if you have nested uh, braces down to several levels so that yeah, uh, you don't um, want to restore everything. Yeah, good question. See, uh, we have to, we have to uh, store more information. You pointed out that, that my data structure is incomplete. But fortunately, there's room for another quarter word here. Because I had a half word and a quarter word white, you know. Yeah, yes. I have another thing called EQ level, which is the level at which a uh, thing was defined. And this is important, because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to do it right. So, so now besides this, I have a level, and this is the level at which the, the, the definition was made. And there's an, then this number is a little tricky. You have to work it out. And in fact, um, uh, in the first version of tech, um, uh, I think uh, about uh, six bugs were in that section because I kept learning more and more about this scheme as I, as I, and each time I thought I, I finally understood it completely. 
Um, now I think I do, but uh, I'm not sure I can explain it to you in five minutes. <laughs> um, but there is a level at which at which the definition is made. And so level goes in with it. And if this level turned out to be the same as the current level, then I don't even bother putting anything on the safe stack because the previous definition, because something already was saved from an outer level. So suppose, for example, I'm on level three inside of three pairs of braces and um, and I have two depths of A. When I did the first depth of A, then I saved something for fixing up later. I did the second depth of A. I just throw away the first depth. I don't have to store away the first depth. If I stored it away, it would take up space and I would undo it and then I would undo undo that again so it, you know so I, no point in wasting the space and doing extra work so I just throw it away at the time if it's the same level but if it's but, but if it's at a different level actually I must be at a higher level because it'll because it, it is going to be a property of this whole method that every level on the save stack is less than or equal to my current level I think strictly less than my current level so I'll never save anything. And, and when I restore the save stack, I'm going to uh, when I get to the end of a group, I'm going to pop back until I get to the right place in the save stack. So besides fix up words in the save stack, I might have another fix up word here. And then I'll have a, a boundary type of a word here. OK, a boundary type of a word that says this is the this is where I began a new group. And there will be a boundary word up here too. beginning of a new group. OK, so when I get to the to a right brace at the end of a group, I, I, I run back and I do all the fix ups until I get back to the preceding boundary. And now everything is re restored to the way it was when I entered that group. You get the general idea of this of this method. Um, so last in so when I get to the beginning of a when I get to the to start of a group, suppose somebody writes H box. And then left brace. OK, I'm beginning a group. So everything in, in here, when I get to the right brace, it's going to tell me, um, uh, it, you know, then I'm going to uh, go, go back and restore all the definitions of things that were made in this group. And that'll be indicated in this boundary here. Now, I need a few more pieces in my data structure. And you're probably going to discover this. Yes? No? OK. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, the way the old version of tech, this is a, a, a big change between the old version of tech and the new one and why the new one can be a lot better. Um, I, I, in, in the old way was that I kept in this boundary word here uh, what kind of a group was starting there. For example, in this H box case, this would say beginning of an H box. But I didn't remember that what kind of a group I was I, I was in. Instead, I would go through, do all my fix ups until I got back to a boundary word and, this, uh, uh, and it would say, oh, that was an H box group that you were doing. So I was uh, a right brace came along. But, but at this point, I had forgotten uh, really what kind of a thing I was working on. And uh, but I but I knew it was somewhere in the save stack. And so I just went back to it. And then it, then, then it told me, uh, yes, it was uh, it was an H box group. And so then I go and finish the H box. Um, uh, for the for tech 82, this would this would be very bad because uh, if we, we wanted to get rid of H box par and things. So if this was a V box and if I would uh, destroy all this stuff here, I'd be about to make a paragraph. But I just erased the baseline skip that I was supposed to use for that paragraph. So I uh, so I want to know when I have this right brace that I'm in a V box and uh, still have to finish that before I do the before I, I, I go doing these fix ups. So the um, uh, so the new data structure. Um, stores in, store. Uh, I have a. Uh, I keep track of what kind of group I'm in. It's called cur group, the kind of group I'm in. And then in the boundary word, I don't store the the kind of group that was starting there, but the kind of group I interrupted. So this boundary word is going to be a pointer to the previous boundary word, and it tells what kind of boundary word that was. Therefore, when I get to the end of a boundary. Um, uh, when I get to a right brace, I look at Kerr group and says, oh, yes, I was finishing this such I, I'm finishing such and such a kind of group. And if I want to, I can do these fix ups as soon as I and the, at the right time I can do the fix ups. Then I finally do the fix ups. Then I then I said Kerr group to the old Kerr group that was that was stored there and, and, and resume as I as I as I had it. So the save saving and restoring equivalents gets a bit subtle um, and it's all described in um, 
Uh, let's see, part um, 19 of the program starting at module 251. So, th so the, the, the problem of saving and restoring equivalence in that part of the data structure is discussed there, and it's one of the most subtle parts of I'll take. The program is actually short. Um, it covers modules 251 up to um, up to 269. Um, so it's 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 uh, rather small amount of code, but the code itself uh, uh, had to be just right in order to do all these features. Uh, I haven't described what what about global definitions yet, and that's the that's the other th uh, interesting thing about this, which you add on top of everything else I said. What happens when you said global or GDEF of A? And in that case, you, um, um, you, you don't bother saving the old value because you're never going to want to put it back again. And you set the EQ level to 1. And uh, if you look carefully at what this does, and you have to consider all the cases where you have, uh, uh, say, 10 definitions, and some of them were local and some were global, and see exactly what gets stored and what didn't, uh, you see that it does, in fact, work. Um, so so uh, that's the, the other catch is that when something is global and I try to fix it up, I'm coming through in the right brace and I try to fix up something, and I look and see that the, the thing that's in there is at level one, that means it was defined global in the block, so I don't really fix it up at all. And the, the uh, yep, Dan? Is there any other use for EQ level besides that? Uh, no. They, well, it's important for uh, garbage collection uh, uh, because if I didn't know that, then I wouldn't throw away things at the wrong time, uh, uh, at the right time. There, I would lose my last reference to a token list. So, um, uh, so that's why I have added an extra quarter word array called XEQ level here to regions five and six so that I can have the level information for these two guys which didn't have an extra quarter word. So regions five and six is extra arrays of one byte each for these guys saying what their level is. It, without that, um, uh, um, uh, th things would go wrong. At one point, I thought I could get by with it, but then I found, I found out later that I couldn't. So, it, uh, so I needed all of the, so I needed all the structure of levels and boundary and, uh, and so on. It's all, it, it's all wrapped up, and if any one of those things goes, the whole thing falls in some cases, even though it, would, it might work for a few months. Um, uh, this is the way, uh, no, this, this kind of thing uh, can, can um, actually work on all the simple examples, and then, and then it will fail on the others. So now I believe it's been thought through uh, with perfect rigor. But it's a, it's a, it, it was one of the subtle parts of the, of the program uh, worth, worth studying, I think, for, for uh, software people. Um, okay, that's the uh, then representation of control sequences and uh, equivalence, and uh, the subtle parts about it were uh, re related really to the garbage collection issues that I just hinted at. Um, namely, um, uh, there's a reference count on each token list. So suppose I've saved uh, something on the stack. It's a uh, suppose I've saved uh, uh, this, and this was a, a pointer to some place in memory. Uh, the old definition of A, all right? So um, uh, that token list has a reference count associated with it. Now, um, I, I did a def of A. Well, then later on in this block, I did a gdef of A. Um, so at that point, I wipe out this definition. I set the level to 1. But later on, but this fix-up is still there in save stack. I'm not going to go back looking through the save stack to see if I had any fix-ups for the thing. So then when I finally get to the right brace and I come through, I see fix up 226. I look and see, oh, the level's been 1, so there's been a GDEF to this guy. I'm not going to fix it up. I have to remember to decrease this, this reference count to, uh, on this entry that I'm not going to use. I don't just ignore this one. I, I, I decrease its reference count. That was one of the latter bugs to, that I caught, that I, uh, I had been uh, losing, losing my memory at one point because of this. Um, Yes, I'm forgetting all these things. Uh, losing space in my memory. Um, okay. Um, oh, I wanted to make a, a point about this a little bit, that at level one, at the outermost level, you don't have to save anything because there's never going to be a right brace getting you out of that level. 
And so you, so, so, um, you, you um, save yourself. It, it, uh, that's why people have had the phenomenon that the tech will work fine on a program. And then they put left brace and right brace at the, around everything. And all of a sudden it runs out because save stack overflowed. Um, the reason is that when you when you're in level two, when you're you know when you're inside of braces, then I'm starting to having to save everything. And in the old tech, it saved every time you changed the font. Every time you changed current font, it put something on the save stack. Um, and uh, pretty soon, if you had a long enough program, the save stack would have lots of fix up font, fix up fonts in there. Uh, well, now it not only I think I don't think it will uh, will change the font anymore because uh, I have level on the font I didn't used to, uh, but I have. Um, uh, but but uh, it still will will use uh, memory more efficiently if you don't have unnecessary unnecessary uh, uh, braces uh, here. Okay. Now some other questions. Uh, yes. Uh, if if you have a, a definition in the outer level, then it would I, be. I a, can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> if you had a definition in the outer level, say a, a backslash a, mm -hmm. then it would have uh, level one. Okay. And then yeah. Um, uh, levels level one is what in, inside the program when it's level one is the technical term used for the outer level because level zero is the is the uh, is is completely undefined and and um, so we consider that an undefined control sequence was defined at level zero um, that's a technical point uh, when I send an error message to a user, I say he's at level zero when he's when I think he's at what I call level one because he's hasn't he's not really inside of any of any braces. So for example at suppose you write this this tech program, left brace end. <clears throat> when I see the left brace, I set cur level, that's one of my parameters, cur, well, one of my global variables is cur level. When I see a left brace, um, cur level goes up from level one to level two. Then I see end, and I check: is cur level greater than level one? And I say, oh yes, it's at le it's level two. This is, looks strange. So I tell the user, end occurred at level one. It doesn't use the word level, though. It's I change, I fix the error message, so it's a little more uh, uh, makes a little more sense. Uh, but um, it, um, it 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 says one in, instead of two, even though my my date my. Uh, um, uh, the number in, inside of tech is two. Uh, I report it to the user as one. If you if, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, it's all much clearer if you look it up in the code. And uh, end occurred. Uh, that's module 1203. When you're just finishing tech, uh, one of the last things it does is it gives this message, um, and it said end end occurred inside a group at level. And then it prints out cur level minus level one. If you can think of a more informative error message than that, that seemed to be one that my wife understood. It's my test. Excuse me. Then you have it. Yeah. Uh, does it work? Yeah. Um, what what happens if on the outer level you get I have a slash def you have a def slash a uh, second level you redefine it, and the third level you gdef it. Okay, yeah. Let's look at this case just to see what happened. So here, then here I said gdef a. Okay. Yeah. So on the outer level I defined a. Nothing goes in the save stack because its previous definition was. I mean I'm still at level one, so nothing is in the save stack here. There's no way to take this one away. Um, It'll never end at a group, so I never put anything on the save stack for that. Here, I put something on the save stack, and so um, this will be then uh, two. What was it? Two hundred and whatever. Two what? Two twenty-six. Okay, it'll say fix up two twenty-six. Um, let's call this um, uh, okay alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. So at so after I do this definition, I stick alpha in here. When I get to this definition, it'll say fix up 226 alpha, and beta gets stuck stuck in here. When I get to this definition, oh, and also this will say level two, okay, and this will say one alpha. Okay. 
Now, I get to this definition. Uh, this definition, I'm at level three. Um, and uh, so it, uh, it's not equal to this level. So I put it on the save stack. Two beta fix up to 26. Um, and put in here three gamma, oh, one gamma, G def, one gamma. OK, get to the end of this group. What? Uh, so why are you put on the save stack since it was a G def? You're right. I didn't put this on. So there was a G def. Didn't, yeah, that's right. It was, yeah, I didn't put it on. I just wiped it out and decreased the reference count to beta. Then, um, OK, then when I, when I get to the right brace here, I, I look back and I see it's going to, uh, no, nothing happens. I get to the next right brace that finishes this group, and it, that'll tell me to fix up uh, this definition here. But I look in position 226, and it's got a global in it. And so, that's, uh, so it doesn't get fixed up. Now, on the other hand, if somebody had made a def of A at this point, then it would have some, something at level two, and I would, and I would go back, and, uh, and that would have wiped out the G def at this point, you see. So it's the last, survi the last G def survives, but, uh, but uh, you can be a G def can always be can canceled by a local def. And this one, would, this one would store away this guy, gamma. And then that gamma would be restored. And when I finally got in, and so finally when I got to this one, it would still not, it would still not replace gamma by alpha. <laughs> That's what I meant by saying try it and you'll see that it works. And there's a, and besides there's a, 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 an informal rendering of the uh, proper invariant relation that, that gives uh, the basis for the mathematical proof that it works stated in that section there. What was it, 250 something or other? Um, I, I believe somewhere I, I, I at least hinted at what was the right notion of it. Um, let's see. New save level. Well, I can't find it just now. Um, uh, well, yeah, 265. If at least one global definition of EQTB has been carried out within the group that just ended, the last such definition will therefore survive. And that, um, if you translate that into quantifiers and logic and everything, would be the, the right thing to put in as in a formal proof of correctness of this algorithm. There's, a li there's another complication that I didn't mention, of course, with respect to if and, and uh, so when you say if, then the level number doesn't actually go up when, when you pass this left brace. And so when you get to the right brace afterwards, um, you just take out the boundary word and shift everything down. Uh, you have to read the code, but you'll see that it works. <clears throat> OK, any more questions? Well, uh, tomorrow morning then, uh, we, we begin the class at 9.30 and we begin breakfast at uh, about nine o'clock, so come early enough and have some have some uh, to eat. What are you trying to do? Oh, um, uh, start at the beginning, I would say, and uh, and and uh, start at the beginning. Read some of these comments and familiarize yourself with the use of the index, and then set yourself some uh, problem or other. In other words, something. Say, I wonder how he does that. Um, now, the way you can do that—that's a good question. Uh, um, if you take any, any one of text primitives, like def or something like that, you can look it up in the index under that name, and it'll say def primitive. It'll refer you to um, the place where it was put in the hash table. And then that'll refer you to what command code it has. And you, sh you might be able to trace through, looking at the index, the whole, seek, the whole history of, of, of def, how it comes through tech. But this, anyway, give yourself, if you don't like that problem, give yourself some other little task uh, you know, saying, I wonder what this hap what, what, what this does, and, and, and that'll just give you a, a, um, a, a reason for perusing the index and, and, and finding your way through the report. Because the main thing to do is just to get a little familiar with the notation and, uh, 
and uh, uh, mess up the page, the, the, uh, get the page a little, a little black on the edges. Yeah.